All right, so that was it. Now let's get to the point and start with supervised learning. So this is basically uh, what we saw. So for now, we saw classification. Classification is just uh, a supervised learning program. So what does that mean? It means we have an input sample X and it's joint label Y. So when you want to train a model, you have two things. You have the, the, the feature vector that you extracted to represent your sample or your data point. But you also have a target variable that you want to predict. So why we call it supervised? Because here the model is being taught or supervised by the labels, the output labels. So the output labels, depending on your prediction rate during the training, every time you try to predict those labels, you're making a few mistakes here and there. So you're trying to minimize your error. So you're trying to change the parameters of the model accordingly, tweak them a little bit so you minimize your error and then get a better prediction. So how do we know that we're getting a better prediction? By comparing our predicted labels with the ground truth one, with the Y. So this is why we call it supervision, because the labels or the output target Y, it supervises uh, the model. Now what we have, we want to estimate a learner or a mapping function F from a space X where all the observations live to a target space Y. And uh, here, what do we have? We have label data. So this is supervised learning. It works with label data. So we have uh, different samples. So right there, it's uh, here it means the samples. We have how many samples? We have L samples. So we can write this. Uh, I can unfold it in this way. So X1, Y1, and then X2, Y2. So this is the second uh, sample. And we have basically here L samples, L labeled training samples. Okay. So, and then what do we have? We have a test set. So when you say supervised learning, you need to have a hidden test set where you're going to evaluate your model after training. And this test set, it has maybe a, a, a different number of testing samples. So without the, the Y. So we want just to predict the unknown variable. Now we can have different settings. So what are the four settings we saw last time for this? So we can go from one input, right, to multiple outputs. Okay, so the Y can be a set of outputs, not a single value, uh, valued variable. We can go from a single input, like just one uh, representation of the data, to uh, one, and we can go from many to one and many to many. Okay, so this is very important. We're going to see different examples. So let's let's have a small drawing right here. Let's graph this. I will give you an example, another example of classification. So in this case, we've, we've seen classification, but if we look at the variable y, right? So if we want to do regression, we're not manipulating discrete values. We're manipulating... Uh, Con continuous values. So we're mapping, for example, from uh, a space where we have uh, different numbers. So I'll, I'll explain this right here. So you're, you're having a feature, like a long feature vector, but you want to predict, for example, the age of a person or their IQ. Right? So this is a real valued number. It's not just a class minus one plus one or you know a bunch of like uh, classes. So this is what we call regression. You're, you're mapping from it's the same thing. So I consider classification as a subclass of regression. Now let's say you have the salary here X, uh, X, the X axis represent the salary uh, of an employee. And the y-axis um, represents the percentage, like uh, maybe percentages, or how much, how much the employee spends on shopping. Okay. So, for example, uh, if we start, I don't know, like let's maybe put here. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, etc. Okay. 
So how do you draw this data? It depends, but hypothetically, you would expect that generally, uh, if you have uh, the, the higher the salary, the more you might be able to spend on shopping. So the trend might go like this. So these are points. We collected these data of different employees. Okay, maybe the majority are right there. And this is the distribution of our data. Now what we want to learn is, given these observations, we know we have collected the salary and how much each um, uh, uh, employee spends on shopping, we want to predict for a new uh, employee. How can we do that? How can we solve this problem? So we need to train a model to learn the uh, like the best fit to this distribution, like to learn a model that best fits these observations so we can maybe learn how to predict for unknown or hidden observation. So in this case, let's say if I learn this fitting line, so I put it in a way such that it is close to all points at the same time. So this is what we call a regression line. In this case, it's very simple. It's just a linear uh, regression. So what we want to minimize, I want to minimize the, let's say, the distance from all these points to the line. So this line is my prediction line. So if I have a new... Uh, employee right there and this is the salary of the employee then what I need to do is simply project that on the line and then I see where it falls on the uh, shopping axis and this will be my prediction okay so this is my new point that I added to the data so this is the prediction so this is how regression works it's very simple so we try to fit uh, a model to the data the, the observations the inputs and the outputs and then in a simple way once after training the model or learning this uh, pink line then we can easily predict for new observations uh, that are coming okay or new uh, samples so there is a problem so what is the hypothesis of this model the hypothesis that we can see here what is the hypothesis that you can drive or what do we assume about the behavior of the employee or the relationship let's say more between the amount of salary you're getting and how much you're spending linear, linear but it's also increasing which, which means generally the trend is the higher the salary the more you're gonna spend right that's the slope right of the model now sometimes you might if you, I don't know if you guys have watched this a movie uh, confessions of a shopaholic uh, it's kind of a comedy <laughs> comedy movie not very important but what is important is sometimes you can have uh, people like Rebecca in the movie she's like she has very low salary but she spends a lot on shopping so this will create something like this in your model so you have your point right there okay so this is maybe a Rebecca. And then where, like how much she's spending on shopping, it's right here. So this, in this case, what do we have? We have a new point. And imagine if this point we want, first, if we want to uh, predict what, how much she's spending, we're going to get a very large error, okay? Because it's different from... The, the, the ground truth. And the second thing, if you want to retrain the model, the model will be, uh, it might be highly biased by that, by this line, by this new uh, point, right? Because it will try to get closer a bit to it, right? So the problem here is when you have something that we call outliers, an outlier, that is a point that is far away from the main distribution of the data, then you need to think about a smarter strategy to solve this problem. So for now, I just want you to keep in mind that sometimes in your data you might have a lot of issues, and outliers is one of them. And this is one of the biggest challenges in machine learning, how to handle outliers, okay? So... Here, what I would like you to do is I would like you to take a pen and paper and think about, for those who uh, 
see this for the first time, I want you to build your own model. So tell me what is your, your input data, what is your target, uh, the target value that you want to predict, how did you collect the data, how did you extract it, and how you're going to train, which kind of cross-validation strategy you're going to use to train and test your model. So let's go back to our previous lecture here. And I would like you to write something like this, but for a regressor, okay? So just think about something. It might be something complicated linked to your research project, or it might be something simple. But I would like you also to think about potential problems. What kind of problems you have in your data, like complex problems. So if you already are familiar with these notions, so I want you to go one step further and think about, okay, I collected my data, but my data is noisy, or my data is missing samples, or my data has, has a lot of outliers. So think one step uh, forward and how to probably can, you can improve your model to handle those by just drawing a figure, like a small figure. But for now, the main task is just to create a regressor by defining a problem, uh, saying what your data is, what your features are. So in this case, what was the feature? in the case of the salary and shopping. Salaries. Just salary, it's just one value, right? So be creative and write something down, okay? So I'll give you uh, three minutes. <laughs> 